Good morning in the States and here in Europe, <laughs> good afternoon. Uh, we are uh, going to talk about the use of mathematica in some studies about the structural dynamics. Okay, the, the structure of our uh, presentation will be this. Uh, uh, after showing you a brief abstract and talking slightly about uh, us, uh, I will present uh, which studies do we have in progress, the basic of dynamic of structures, why we use Mathematica, and we will show you a, a, a short example uh, of what we do, uh, the generation of a theoretical signal, identification of natural frequencies, filtering, and how uh, do we calculate the, the model damping ratio. After that, we will show uh, how to uh, applicate this to a real structure and uh, the future studies that we are we are doing. So uh, let me show this this abstract. And uh, as I told you, uh, this presentation tried to summarize the, the content of the different modules that we are implementing in Warframe Mathematica and that uh, we use as support in the academic studies that we are carrying out in the field of structural dynamics. Uh, what's the most usual? Well, the most usual case is to have the record of several accelerometers of uh, a structure. And it allows us to, to have immediately the maximum absolute values of the recorded acceleration. But uh, the mathematical treatment of such data can provide much more information. And this is the content of our presentation. Uh, this is because the vibration of, of the structure can be decomposed into the sum of, of various vibrations, uh, which correspond to what we are uh, call the vibration modes of the, of the structure. These natural frequencies of vibration are determined from the analysis of the spectrum of the accelerogram, which is obtained using the Fourier transform. And besides, when the structure is in a free vibration region, uh, we can get the modal damping ratio. Uh, and it's also interesting uh, what happened with the different calculation methods. Uh, what's the most important of this? That uh, the symbolical, symbolic calculation software Mathematica have facilitated us the implementation of these modules. And it has allowed the analysis of the registered data of real structure, uh, making possible to advance in the knowledge of uh, structural dynamics and giving rise to several scientific uh, publications. Uh, well, uh, something about, about us, uh, because it's uh, obvious that we, it's important to, to see uh, where we work, uh, if you are interested. Uh, Miguel Angel Astiz uh, is professor, doctor, civil engineer, uh, and he's a prominent professional in the field of structural engineering, one dynamics, and finite element analysis in you know, other areas. Uh, until his retirement, he was full professor of bridge engineering at the Madrid Polytechnic University, UPM. And now he continues his collaboration at Carlos Fernandez Casado, one of the most important Spanish project engineering firm specialized in bridge and large scale structure. And uh, I am Juan Antonio Lopez Aragon, civil engineer, a member of the Corp of Civil Engineers of the Spanish Ministry for Transport, Mobility and Urban Agenda. And I combine my professional work as senior advisors in the ministry with my studies for finishing the PhD in the uh, Polytechnic University of Madrid under the direction of, of Miguel Angel Astiz. Uh, of course, um, uh, if you have any doubt, uh, you can show this in the uh, Q&A uh, or in the chat, and uh, we will try to, to answer this in the end of the presentation, or if it's not possible, uh, in, in the email that I will show you at, at the end of the presentation. Well, uh, what about, about the studies that we have in progress? Well, we are in a very interesting uh, general context. We have the Sustainable Development Goals uh, set by the United Nations for 2030, the technological evolution, the internet of things, and big data. And what happened with civil engineering? That now conservation is uh, specialized in the uh, advanced countries. is more important than the construction of new infrastructure because the, we have the need of preventive maintenance and inspections due to the critical character of, of bridges. Uh, we have here two um, 
examples that happened in the in the last year, the Grand Bridge in Italy in 2018, and the uh, collapse of the Lane 12 in in Mexico in 2021, uh, with a lot of fatalities. So it shows the importance of the maintenance of, of bridges. And uh, the monitoring of bridges allows us uh, to detect incidents at an early stage and saving on eventual repair costs. So our work tried to analyze the behavior of civil bridges in order to know how can vary dynamic parameters. We try to answer to this question, which is the behavior of free structures, which dynamic parameters are stable, how affects the structural typology, in variation because of damage, do we have to consider ambient variables, can be modeled, or in the case of the model damping ratio, which is the influence of the calculation methods, and if it, they can be improved. So the dynamic parameters uh, um, that we obtain is thanks to the dynamic of the structures, that it's in this, in this other slide. Uh, as it is well known, the question that models uh, the response of a linear viscosity damping single degree of freedom system at spring and their mechanical excitation is this one. Uh, we have the mass, the second derivative of the displacement, so the acceleration, the damping, the first derivative, which is the velocity, the stiffness, the displacement, and uh, all this sum is equal to the mechanical excitation or, or load. So uh, what happened uh, with real structures like bridges and buildings, that they are multiple degree of freedom systems. And fortunately to, to, to everyone that has to solve this equation, the response of a real structure is equivalent to the sum of various simple degree of system of freedom systems. Uh, normally, um, if you make a test, uh, uh, you only take acceleration uh, thanks to special devices, which are called accelerometers. And the records are named accelerograms. And the waves and their free and force vibrations can be modeled as follows. The acceleration is equal to uh, an initial amplitude, a sub zero, an exponential function with the damping, the circular frequency and the time, and a cosine function uh, with an argument uh, of the circular frequency, the time, and the phase difference, the initial phase difference, which is our objective, our objective to obtain the dynamic parameters of the system from the accelerograms. And uh, obviously, it can be complicated in the case of uh, natural frequency of vibration and model damping ratios, and it's what we are trying to, to solve. Why Mathematica? Uh, as I told uh, initially, uh, obviously we, we use spreadsheets and, and all uh, normal uh, software, but uh, we need something more than a common uh, software for, for this. And besides, we wanted to compare the behavior of different calculation methods. So we need to implement and control the code. Uh, we, we wanted to, to know exactly what's happening with the, with the code. And since we were accustomed to Mathematica, we considered the possibility of using this software. And we are tremendously happy with this decision, as we will see in this presentation, because it has uh, allows us to, to, to arise to, to several presentations. Well, uh, as an um, example, I will uh, show you uh, uh, what's happened with, uh, with a theoretical signal. So uh, we will generate here uh, a signal of 15 seconds length, uh, which is the sum of three weights because a random noise. We have uh, with number one, two, or three with these amplitudes, these frequencies, these uh, model damping ratios, and this phase difference. And we will add a random noise, a slightly higher than the real resolution of accelerometers in order to simulate uh, most unfavorable conditions to, to solve the, this problem. So the function uh, that we are referring is the following. Well, we, we will clear the, the variables and we have here. So I will execute, okay? And we have here the, the plot of this uh, function. Uh, if you have an accelerometer, uh, really uh, you will have a, a, a data point to point point by point. So uh, we will generate a table uh, similarly to, to this previous plot. Uh, 
um, if you see here a uh, slight changes in the numbers, it is because of that we have add a, a random noise. So we will uh, generate the, the data and it's here with, uh, with, the, with the result. And we can uh, plot again this. So uh, we have here more or less the same plot that we have before, but uh, with point by point data. Okay, uh, what the next step that we have to do once we have the accelerogram? We have to identify natural frequencies, uh, which is the most often used tool uh, the Fourier transform. Among other options, Mathematica bring us the opportunity of using the, the tool Fourier to obtain the discrete Fourier transform, the DFT, uh, from a list. So it saves us a, a lot of computational cost <laughs> and programming cost. Uh, this uh, is an extract of the code for that. Uh, sorry, because uh, some of the of the uh, name of the variables are in Spanish, but uh, it is uh, easy for us. <laughs> but here is the step, the channel, and uh, the parameters of the Fourier uh, transform the limits of the accelerograms and uh, all the uh, manipulation, the, the management that we, we have to do with the vectors and the matrices. So if we we execute this, uh, it is here. And uh, if we plot the results of the calculation, uh, the graphic or the plot that we obtain is called the spectrum of the signal, where the peaks correspond with the natural frequencies. If everyone goes right, one, two, and four Earth, as we indicate in the simulate uh, wave. So let's plot the wave. And here we can see in the spectrum, the peaks at one, two, and four Hertz, as it was expected. Okay. Uh, the next step, the next step is to, to make the filter of the, of the signal because uh, as we said before, we have to de uh, decompose the signal into simple degree of freedom uh, signals. Uh, and there are a lot of literature about filters uh, with uh, the properties. And here I, I put one of the easiest one, the, the passband filter, the rectangle, uh, because it's the easiest one. Uh, one of the handicap uh, of this kind of filter is the uh, introduction of some distortion in the boundaries. But we can cut the, the signal in the boundaries because uh, it's enough with the central part of the, the central section of the accelerogram. And of course, the application for that type of filters is possible. And in fact, it would be interesting to study what happened with, with these uh, filters. Well, so after defining the filter and, and the cut length of the filter signal, the extract of the code uh, would be this. Uh, here we define uh, that if we want to get uh, the frequency of one hertz, we will filter between 0 0.8 and 1.2. If we want 2.0 hertz, we will filter uh, between 1.8 and 2.2. And if we want to filter uh, around 4.0 hertz, between 3.8 and 4.2. And the cut of the of the wave uh, will be 20 seconds. Remember that we have a 50 second length uh, wave. So we will get the 10 seconds in the in the center. I will execute this data and all this uh, manipulation with the vectors and the matrices. And we will apply the, the filters here. Okay. So we obtain here uh, for each natural frequency, here natural frequency number one, the plot of the ideal passband filter between 0.8 and 1.2 hertz, the filter accelerogram without uh, uh, any cut, so from zero to 50 uh, seconds, and we will get the central part here, the from 20 to 30 seconds in the in the accelerogram. And the same for natural frequency number two, and the same for natural frequency number three. Remember that we obtain three graphics for each natural frequency filter, filter signal, and cut on filter signal. Okay. 
And the next step is to get the modal damping ratio. Uh, we can obtain the modal damping ratio for, um, thanks to different calculation methods. Uh, we will see one of the most common in detail because we have not very many time. And this is uh, the, the most often method, uh, used method is the logarithmic decrement, which is the classic procedure per excellence. Uh, and it's directly applicable to single degree of freedom systems and they're going free vibrations. So uh, the model damping ratio is obtained uh, thanks to the ratio between two maximum displacements. Here we have the Nepedian logarithmic uh, between these uh, two displacements over n consecutive cycles. So this is the, the expression. And alternatively, we can uh, obtain the modal damping ratios uh, not only uh, thanks to the displacement, but also the acceleration, which is really the data that we have recorded. And once the signal is isolated for a given frequency, as we've done before, uh, we have to choose a criterion because we will have the uh, extremes and we have to choose uh, with which criteria we will get the, the model damping because uh, we can uh, select the ratio between, between the first and the last one extreme or between the first and the second, the third, or the third, the first and the fourth, and making an average or adjusting uh, this curve or with uh, uh, this square adjustment. So uh, imagination is free. <laughs> so uh, I prefer, uh, as we will see here, uh, getting the, the extremes and after getting the extreme, doing an average. So the code for, for this uh, uh, is this one. And I say that I want uh, uh, the, that the extreme will be separated five cycles, which is these parameters. So if I execute this, and again, I execute this, what I have for each natural frequency, uh, for instance, this case, in this case, natural frequency number one, the extreme values, which is here, and the average model damping ratio, 0.0.2 percent. In the case of the natural frequency number two, 1%. And in the case of the natural frequency number three, 0.5%. Obviously, the obtaining results are very, very approximately uh, to the theoretical values, 2, 1, and 0.5% in the, in the example. Remember that we have a add a random noise. So it is clear that because of the noise and also all the procedure, the filter um, uh, and all the numerical approximations, uh, it's very difficult to get the uh, exact value, but it's very, very, very good values. And uh, I said before, there are other calculation methods, the band white method, the cure fitting, or the random decrement technique. And we have implemented all of them in order to see what happens uh, with one uh, and another and another method. Well, um, we have applied this to, to real structures. This is one real structure in Spain. It's called the, the road viaduct uh, Arcos Alconeta. It's a, a really high uh, uh, bridge. It is in, in the river uh, Tagus, Tajo. Uh, it's uh, more, uh, with a, a span of more than 200 meters. So it's a, a really big uh, extraction. And thanks to this work, uh, we, uh, this is the computational model of the bridge. And we have uh, compared the experimentally registered uh, natural frequencies and modes of vibration with the computational model. Which is here, we can see that uh, the experimental frequencies, uh, it's in the first uh, lane, 0 0.396 hertz, and the Theoretical one is 0 0.303 or 0 0.6, 0, 0, 0 0.639. So it's very interesting. Also, we calculate the modal damping ratios and we study the evolution of the dynamic parameters over time. And we analyze the relationship between uh, dynamic parameters and ambient variables like temperature, wind, or the maximum acceleration because the acceleration are the uh, interload measurement uh, in these cases. 
here we have a, an example, the, the correlation between the ambient temperature and the natural frequency of vibrations uh, over the time. And we can see very, very uh, good uh, relationships uh, with a coefficient of determination of almost uh, 0 0.82. Uh, remember that the maximum is one if it was a, a perfect correlation. The other ones are not so, so good, but uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.5 or 0 0.5 uh, are very, very good uh, data for a real structure. And we have presented our conclusions in different papers and communication, if you are interested. Uh, this one about uh, the, the experimental analysis of, of the evolution of the dynamic parameters of a long span metal arc. Uh, this other one about the reaching experiences in structural monitoring of bridges. Or this another one, the singularities observed in the calculation of the modal damping ratio of a long span metal arc that we will present uh, in Coimbra in, in the following days, in, in a congress that we will be celebrated in, in Portugal in the, in the following days. And of course, uh, future studies, because we are working in other papers like uh, this one dedicated to the influence of the modal damping ratio and calculation method, as I said before. Uh, which have uh, been submitted to a specialist site publication, and now it's under revision. And we are also studying the dynamic behavior of the typology of railway bridges. Uh, these two bridges, Viaduct uh, Arroyo del Valle and Viaduct uh, Arroyo de las Piedras in Spain. And it would be possible to carry out more studies, for instance, to extend this kind of study to more viaducts with other typologies, locations, to analyze the influence of the type of filters, deeper in the physical modeling of the relationship that we have observed and to increase the studies about the effect of structural damage over the dynamic parameters, both in, in computational models and in fuel scale best. Okay, so uh, as conclusion, throughout the presentation, we have seen the sense of the academic studies that we are carrying out in the field of structural dynamics. We have seen how the use of the symbolic calculation software and Mathematica has facilitated us the implementation of the different modules and has allowed the analysis of the registered data of real structure. And this made possible to advance the knowledge of structural dynamics, giving rise to several scientific publications. Uh, we want to express our gratitude to Wolfram for the organization of this virtual technology conference, where we are sharing knowledge and experience with our colleagues, to Universidad Politécnica de Madrid, UPN, the university where we are developing these studies, to MITMA, the Ministry for Transport, Mobility and Urban Agenda of Spain for the access to the real data of bridges, and of course, to the audience of this presentation for their interest. Thank you very much, muchas gracias. And if you are interested uh, in these topics, we have here with uh, several references that uh, you could see if, if you want. And uh, now, if you have any question and answer, I will uh, have a look to the, to the chat uh, but if you have any doubt or comment in the future, we will be pleased to answer if possible uh, with, to my email, which, which is here. Uh, don't hesitate to contact us in the, in the mail. So thank you very much again. And I will have a look because uh, with this window, I, I cannot uh, see properly the, the chat if there are any questions and answers. Um, Okay, I have here one, one uh, question from, from Danny. Uh, Lich Blau, uh, who says, uh, besides up and down, does a bridge also have issues with functional vibration around the length axis or lateral per, uh, to the span from wind? Uh, yes, uh, uh, we have uh, in, in this uh, big bridge, uh, we, uh, we have uh, several vertical accelerometers and some transversal accelerometers in order to see what happened with, with the wind because uh, in fact, this, this bridge uh, is in a, in a bailey, uh, great bailey as, as you could see uh, with a lot of wind. So uh, we could see uh, not torsional vibration, but uh, we could see uh, lateral vibration uh, in, in some cases. So uh, we get uh, some values for the uh, for the natural frequencies in vertical and in, in, in lateral uh, mode of, of vibration. And 
clearly it is a, a, a very singular case because it is a, 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 a very a, a, it's a metal bridge and it is a, a singular bridge here in Spain, so it's very interesting. Uh, and and being uh, and say that uh, if I will share this presentation, yes, uh, I um, I said before to the to the organization that I will prepare because uh, since I made the presentation it, uh, with the notebook uh, format, uh, it's complicated to 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 generate a good PDF. So I will uh, prepare a, a PDF uh, and I will share in the. In, in the system, uh, I will uh, send this to the organization to be, to be there. Okay, I don't know if, if there is any other uh, question. So uh, anyway, if you have uh, any question, uh, uh, don't hesitate to 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 ask us. And uh, uh, thank you very much again. Uh, uh, here, uh, sharing the notebook can also uh, be very useful. Uh, yes, yes, yes. I uh, don't worry. I, I will. So I will uh, share the, the notebook uh, also. Uh, it is. Uh, uh, it it can be interesting for for everyone. So so of course that, that I will I will share it. So uh, any uh, uh, for inclusion of, of thermal uh, effects. Uh, well, uh, Thomas Branham. Uh, told us uh, about the thermal effects. Uh, we, we have um, a study, certainly, that uh, natural frequency uh, vary, uh, varies slightly with with uh, uh, with temperature. Uh, it is not something new because uh, late uh, uh, papers talk about this, and uh, in fact, for our intention, which is to uh, to settle uh, a structural, uh, um, uh, I mean, uh, uh, a structural health monitoring systems, it's very interesting to to know uh, how are these variations because we have to correct the values that we have uh, in the measurements in order to uh, avoid uh, false uh, positive in the in the SHM uh, system. So. Uh, in fact, we have uh, detect uh, the relationship with the with the natural frequency, but not uh, with the model damping ratio. We uh, could be uh, something that you could imagine beforehand because it's a metal structure, so you know that uh, uh, the property will change uh, with the temperature, and perhaps the damping could vary uh, with this, but not in the range. Uh, in the range. Uh, we didn't see any relationship. In fact, the coefficient of determination was almost zero uh, between the, the model damping ratios and the and the temperature. Uh, by the way, we, we have uh, data of the temperature, both uh, from the ambient temperature and from the arch, because uh, sometimes uh, it depends on uh, whether the sun, whether it's the sun, uh, you can have some difference. So it, it can be some, uh, some uh, it could be interesting so okay so if uh, if you have anything else uh, i insist uh, don't hesitate to to send an email to me and i will uh, try to to answer this uh, okay so thank you very much for for everyone and and to all the audience, bye-bye. Uh,